Freenas with ZFS is an excellent place to store all of your data. But as so many people have learned, the hard way is the best way to describe it. RAID is not a backup. No matter how many drives you put in this and how resilient ZFS is, uh, bad things happen to hardware occasionally. It can go completely wrong. It can completely fail. Disaster can strike. And uh, you want to make sure you have it backed up. Now, I've already covered previously in another video how to do ZFS replication with FreeNAS to another FreeNAS box. So great, you've got it stored in another FreeNAS box. Even better if you have it stored in a FreeNAS box offsite. But what about cloud credentials? How do we get it to sync to places like Backblaze? Well, that's what I'm going to cover in this video is how to set up cloud sync tasks and how to get the data out to another server, such as, you know, in the cloud, uh, whatever cloud you may choose, which, yes, I know it's just someone else's computer, but it's someone's computer in a big data center with lots of, hopefully, infrastructure built around it to keep it all safe and secure. Now, the first thing I wanted to highlight, was so I'm in the RTFM here, which I always recommend people do, uh, read the manual, read the fine manual here. Cloud credentials are stored in encrypted form. To be able to restore cloud credentials from a saved configuration, export password secret seed must be set when saving that configuration. Let me cover that real quick here because I bring these things up for a really good reason. First, let's say you did back up to the cloud and then disaster struck and you're whatever destroyed your free NAS, completely eradicated its existence, and you go, but I got a backup of the backup file because I went here and I hit save config. But then you forgot to check the box. And if you forget to check the box, you lost your cloud credentials. And maybe you don't have those cloud credentials somewhere else where you can pull that data back down. And if you don't have that, that data, if you encrypted it especially, you may not be able to get it back down. So uh, this is unfortunately things that have happened. So I just want to start right here with important detail of this, making sure you export the password secret seed as say, stated in their documentation. Now for clarity, we are using 11.2 U4.1. That's the latest version as of June uh, 2019. And I will also note a bug that I consider a bug. It's a feature request, but it's a bug as far as I'm concerned. And the priority set to low, which also uh, makes me unhappy. The cloud sync tasks, we're gonna, when we cover all of them, you're probably gonna ask the question, what if it fails? There is a notice inside the cloud sync task, but not one sent to you. And, uh, user comments and feel free to add your two cents here that we really would love to see this feature before it says status ready for testing. It's sta sta slated for uh, 11.3 beta one, but I would really love to see this sooner. Um, crossing our fingers, maybe someone would like to do this. Basically what this is, is letting us know that if a cloud sync fails, if it does not upload the data and the sync fails, you don't get an email or a notice. Uh, I don't know how this didn't get put in as a uh, base feature, but I will at least cover that this is a concern and an issue right now that you do kind of have to check or set up your own scripts to check to make sure the task is working. All right, so let's take a look at the settings here on the cloud credentials. I've set up two of them for this demonstration. Backblaze B2 for any Ash YouTube demo. One thing I'll comment here when you do this, um, I'm blurring these, but yeah, they're in the clear. You can see the account ID, application ID, and you can see the master application key uh, right here. So I'm blurring them out, but yeah, they do not obscure them. But when you go through, and I also set up a demo with SFTP, it does do here and you have the show option. Uh, so you can show the password. So interesting. Uh, I didn't set this up, but it does have an option too to put a path in. So this is SFTP over SSH, which is great and it's secure. I'm um, using password authentication, but yes, it does support key authentication and they do have an instruction how to set the key up. I just didn't do it for the demo of this video. All right. So once you have your cloud credentials and they're pretty easy to add, and like I said, they've got quite a long list. You give it a name, you choose all the options, Dropbox, Google Cloud Storage, Google Drive, Hubic, Mega. Um, for anything you choose, uh, if you go over here to the little help option, it leaves a link. Switch to another one like uh, Microsoft OneDrive even. Go here. And it will link to the documentation for either creating an account or how to do it. And especially in the case of like the Google one, if you use your Google Drive, you have to build an access token. And they leave you right to the link of how to build the access token for your account, which I thought was great to actually have that in there. So you're not just kind of left uh, holding the bag of, okay, now I got to figure out how to get this done. Now, the thing missing from here is generic S3. I don't know a way to do this. 
because they haven't done a lot of testing, but it looks like it supports Amazon S3, but not what they refer to as like generic S3. So you can use companies that are just S3 compatible. I haven't really done any testing in that. Um, so I didn't, I looked a little bit, but it didn't really seem to have an option other than all the different S3 options. And I bring this up because there are other services that you may want to add that use bucket storage, but don't, that aren't one of these companies that you want to add. Uh, I'm, Maybe I'll do some experiment with that in the future, but it does support the ones that are listed here. So we'll just leave it at that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, close this. Once you have your cloud credentials, then you're gonna move over to your task. So let's go over here to tasks and cloud sync tasks. Now I've got a handful of them set up. Let me make this a little bit, well, we'll just do this. There you, go. you can see things a little better. The hour, minute, day of the month, month, day of the week. So let's talk about how to set up a task. These are all set up to run hourly. This one, because of the asterisk, is set up to run every minute because I was playing around with that. And to add one, first we get a description. Um, backup. Whether we want to push or pull. Push means get all the data there. Uh, pull means get all the data back over here. So if you're restoring your free NAS, you're gonna to wanna to do a pull. Uh, if not, you do a push. Here's all the different options that we have. We just have the two different cloud credentials. So Backblaze B2 or Linux test box. Uh, we'll go ahead and choose Linux test box. Some test folder. And what this does is it's where you want to save it. So it's going to start at the root because we uh, loaded here, but then some test folder means create a test folder for that and then choose the path that we want. And actually what I've got set up here is uh, cloud backup demo. Remote encryption. Choose your encryption password, choose the encryption salt, and then choose a custom sync task and whether or not you want this enabled. Now, if you hit custom, it lets you choose here and it's going to tell you when it's going to go. Maybe you want something daily, weekly, monthly. Um, and if you go, I have a weird schedule. I wanted to do it like every eight minutes or every 10 minutes. You can put commas. Actually, it'd be 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. And then you kind of get the idea from here. You're going to go and say, I want it to run every so many minutes. And now you can see the, how many, what times it will run. Run at all hours by putting an asterisk in there. So you kind of get, whoops, sorry. Uh, you get the idea that you can build these custom scripts for when you want the schedule to run. We'll hit save. Encrypt, I've chosen encryption without encryption salt. Now it also has the options for file encryption uh, of the file name as well, not just remote encryption, but recrypting a name. So anyways, I've got these already set up and already have uh, data synced with there. So let's look at the names here. So let's look at the Backblaze one first. So this is a push, Backblaze encrypted, Backblaze no encrypted. I'm just gonna force them both to run right now. Run now, yep, we'll run this one right now, yes. And you can click here to get the detailed status. Waiting for checks, transfers, et cetera, et cetera. Success tells you what was changed and you can download the log for each of these. And this is why I pointed out before, this is the only place you know if there's success or failures by looking at it, it does not send you an email alert. Let's close these things here. So here are the two spots where we have the data going to inside of there. So we have the FreeNAS encrypted and you can see all the gibberish that's in here because uh, you can't see the files. The files are completely scrambled and encrypted and we're not going to see anything. Here's the no encryption and here's the uh, envelope for our company with our address on it. Uh, that's right here. Here's some text if I wanted to download or create a link to it. You know, I have this right here. Now there's also, because there's more than one of this some text file, this is the copy one, this one here, we can expand and it keeps revisions. This is a feature of Backblaze, not a feature of FreeNAS. So depending on how you set your bucket up, you can decide how many revisions you want to keep, what versions of the file you want to keep. And obviously that's important because you don't necessarily want it to just automatically back up everything and overwrite every time, because what if something corrupted a file? So you want to keep revisions. The good news is the default Backblaze accounts do set up and offer revisioning on there. So we're able to get either version of the file. Now, one of the questions people might have is when you do the restore, which we're gonna cover, how do I know what version of the file I'm getting? By default, you're always gonna get the latest version file, but there is options in simply deleting the current version of the file that's in here, 
means when you do a poll, it will grab the previous version. Uh, so we'll cover that in a second so we know which one we're getting when I go to the restore. So the difference between obviously the encrypted and unencrypted is whether or not you trust the bucket provider to provide the data and hold on to it in a secure manner. If you encrypt, because the encryption is happening prior to it leaving, uh, if someone were to somehow figure out how to get into your Backblaze bucket, they would have nothing but a pile of gibberish. Now your gibberish is only as good as the password you use to encrypt it. So let's look at this and we're edit this. We did a horrible job of encrypting this because the encryption passwords is Thomas123 and encryption salt is 123. So when you're setting these up, um, it does allow you to choose the passwords for things, uh, these things, but please remember what they are. And seeing as you don't have to type them in very often, document what you put or back it all up. So this gets backed up with it with the export set, uh, secret seed as well. And make sure that you have a high entropy password. So make it difficult. Uh, that way, in the worst case scenario where someone somehow found their way into your bucket, like I said, all your backup should be gibberish to them. Uh, and it's going to be only as good as the password is right here. And as long as this all matches, when you do the restore, away you go. Now, there's a couple different ways when you do this encryption, when you do the restore, to handle that. So direction push, we could say direction pull, and then run the same task again, and away we go. I kind of wish they had an option just to hit, like, clone this task, but they don't. But I did do a pull data back option right here. So what this does is pull data back. And we're going to go here, and we're going to edit. We see we have the same password. We've seen everything's the same, except for it's doing a poll and it's going to cloud restore demo. So let's actually open up a window and show what files we have on there and we'll make some changes and we'll do a restore. All right, so, so you can see the path here. This is the FreeNAS server. This is the cloud restore demo folder. And this is the cloud backup demo. So here's where we have our backups and we'll go ahead and open with text editor. This is some text, some more text and even more text. All right, we'll save, close. Let me double check, make sure I saved it. Yep, even more text, awesome. So now we've created a couple of revisions of this some text file, and we're gonna go ahead and run the backup. So cancel, and let's run it. It doesn't really matter, but we'll run it on the encrypted one. So here's the B2 encrypted. Run now, continue has started but obviously it'll complete almost instantly we'll go ahead and refresh the files in here this is where things get tricky and also why i chose the encrypted one you don't necessarily know the revisions of things when you're encrypted because you chose to encrypt the file names hence the reason you may uh, want to consider that before you're doing this so when we do a restore by default it's going to restore this last version i only know it's the last version because the date on it i did this one on 6.8 this one's from 6.9 so if I do a restore, and let's go ahead and see our cloud restore demo folders empty, pull back data. We'll just show you and look at right here, go to edit, show you what it's doing. Um, the bucket is the FreeNAS demo, FreeNAS encrypted is where we're pulling from. It's landing in restore demo, we're doing a pull, we have the same password. Now, please know I don't have this task enabled, so I don't want it to restore things on a regular basis, uh, but we want it to be able to pull back data and have this set up so when I choose to, like right now, run now, continue. Running success, we pulled all the data back. Even more text is in here. But what if I wanted that one that before we put even more text in there, how would that work? Well, what we're going to do here is delete this File. So I can download this file if I want. And by the way, they're using our clone on the back end. Uh, maybe one day I'll do a video on how to do our clone from the command line and uh, do this manually. But for the most part, you want to um, just rely on the FreeNAS one. If you're using the FreeNAS to upload it all, rely on FreeNAS to download it all. Uh, but in the background, it is running our clone in case you're wondering what it's doing. We just know by the revision date, this is not the file I want. I wanted that one that had more text in it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I'm sure, delete that file. So now I only have two copies uh, from 6.8. Uh, one's at 11 o'clock, one's at 10.19. So it'll actually now pull this one. The other one still exists, but because FreeNAS isn't handling a revision, Backblaze is. Backblaze is only pulling the last version of said file. So now we're going to go ahead and run that same task again. It 
it ran. Let's see what's in this file now. Hey, look, it's now the previous version of the file that just has some more text in there. So that's the way it handles the restores on here uh, for pulling them back and the revisions. But like I said, this is a feature of the cloud storage provider, not a feature of how the system works in terms of FreeNAS itself. It does not have a revisioning system for this. It does in terms of snapshots that you should be keeping, but in terms of the backups, it's just backing up whatever you said was in that folder and it does not back up the snapshot. So this is simply a file level backup. This is not like ZFS replication where it's backing up at the block level. So we're still just doing everything as files. So let's talk about what happens when you use this as an SFTP. Now the same rules apply. Go ahead and edit this. This is unencrypted and we've told it to just go to a folder called no encryption. So I'm logged into a standard Linux, Linux box run in Debian. Uh, there's nothing in here. This is the home slash FreeNAS. The username is FreeNAS here. I'm logged in as that user. So you see there's no files here. It's just empty. And what we wanted to do was put things into, well, actually we'll show you what happens when you don't. So what if you didn't put anything in here? We'll hit save. And we're backing up the same cloud backup demo spot. Get rid of some of these columns. So back up to Linux, no encryption. We'll go ahead and run this right now and with no folder on it. And there's all those files, some text, uh, some text copy, LTS envelope. They didn't go in any folder or anything at all because we didn't specify one. So now let's go ahead and RM star. Uh, Get rid of all the files, back to empty here. So let's go ahead and edit this. We're going to make a folder called no encrypt. No encryption, save. Back up to Linux, no encryption. We'll just go ahead and run that now. And then now there's a folder called no encryption. Look in the no encryption folder, there's all the things. Now next one to do is Linux box encrypted. So same thing. We'll run it, but we'll also here look at what it did here. We made a folder called encrypted, same files that back up, same stupid weak password that you should never use. Uh, and we chose file name encryption and remote encryption. So let's go ahead and, and now we have an encrypted with nothing but garbage in here. Now, maybe you do want the file names there. And like I said, you can just check this box, save. Switch back to over here. Actually, we'll get rid of everything and we'll run it again because we'll run it with encryption now. But we chose not to encrypt the file names. So now I can see the names of all these files, but they all end in a .bin because they're encrypted. So uh, let's try to .text.bin and it's gibberish and it's letting you know it's done with our clone. So you, there's not any way without the password to unencrypt it. But that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward to do. It's easy enough to set up. You can choose your destinations or easy to um, have everything configured. It's probably good while you're creating it because uh, if you're a sysadmin and you're using this, go ahead and create an not enabled uh, restore option so you know where you're going to restore things to because you know you don't want to be scrambling to do it if someone says, hey, I accidentally deleted that file. So uh, creating a pullback data from whatever cloud source you're doing. It's not a bad idea to do spot check once in a while. Anytime you're doing any type of backups, uh, any untested backups are just wishful thinking. So I always recommend when you create a backup that you test it. Um, any untested backup, like I said, I can't repeat this enough uh, to people, Untested backs up are wishful thinking as you should not only make sure that things are backed up and trust that we have a success, but make sure you can restore because uh, that's another phone call we've gotten a lot is people go, well, it was all set up and we were checking the logs and it was uploading, um, but then we tried to restore something and it's there. They weren't trying to restore it because they were testing. They were usually trying to restore it under duress, uh, which creates quite a bit of problems for people sometimes um, because they can't get things put back. So please test everything. Just. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but 
the calls come in a little bit too often for that. But that was it for setting it up. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. Um, please, uh, FreeNAS, which I'm sure the folks at FreeNAS are listening, and I will leave a link to this in the description of, can we have this before <laughs> the, the 11.3 beta 1? Um, or maybe 11.3 beta 1 is going to be out sooner than later. So that would be good too. I don't know when, and I didn't look at the roadmap to see exactly when that's tight titled for, but I do want a notification if this backup fails, so we don't have to just go in there and check it once in a while. Uh, but that was it. Uh, like I said, Backblaze, a uh, great service, uh, really affordable for uh, doing this. If you're looking for a cloud backup on there, I, don't have, I should set up an affiliate link with them. I do not have one, uh, but it does work great with Backblaze. It does work great if you want to set up your own uh, FTP or or I'm sorry, SFTP, please don't use FTP unless it's some horrible worst case scenario that you have to. But like I said, it's a great system. Uh, it does work. You can encrypt everything, which is wonderful. Um, that is a feature that was added in the 11.2 series was pre-encrypting all the data before it goes up there. Uh, this checks a lot of compliance boxes and makes you sleep better at night that you're encrypting everything that you're saying to the cloud and it's safe and, you know, protected. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.